Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to do a little Q&A. My good friend Eric Shoemaker from 1967Beetle.com and he now owns LaneRussell.com has uh, hit me up with a series of questions in the early 2015 here. I'm freezing my butt off here in New York in January and uh, the year just turned and um, he sent me a series of questions basically to ask and uh, you know I could have re responded in an email or texted up and I did. I sent that to him so you could read the transcript there but I figured why not do a video and get a little more personal with the folks and you know, give a little knowledge out there to some people and um, basically discuss where my business is, Classic VW Bugs, at this point in time. Um, if you don't know, I, I know Eric for about four or five years now and we've definitely bounced off one another. We've helped each other out through the internet and through our businesses and um, we have the same passions really. I mean, Eric went to school for art just like I did. I did film and animation and cartooning. Eric was a photographer, has done graphics and web design and, um, you know, we both fell in love with the Volkswagen and it was just maybe a thing that the artists like. The artists love the, the Beetle. And uh, Eric has a great story. His grandfather passed down a 1967 Beetle to him. So definitely check out his website and read uh, his backstory. It's, it's pretty cool. So um, we've definitely helped each other out, and I'm here to help him out again and, uh, with a series of questions that he sent me. So let's get to it. All right. Happy 2015, Chris. Tell us where you currently are in your business. Uh, currently, I think the business is doing phenomenal. Uh, 2014 was probably a banner year for us, uh, the best year to date. Uh, and we just keep continuing to grow year after year. Um, I, again, I started this business probably eight years ago in, in, in a one-car garage with my father. And, um, you know, we started on eBay and just flipping beetles and finding one, you know, every month and, you know, dressing it up and taking really good pictures and, and putting it up and, and, you know, having a good frenzy auction. That's what we used to do. And then it just uh, developed into such a great following that uh, people started coming to us saying, hey, you know, why don't you build me a bug? And that's where we now have the, uh, the bills and the full restorations for clientele. And, uh, you know, over the years, of course, we just get, you know, get better. And uh, yeah, now I don't even need eBay anymore. I, didn't, I haven't needed it in a while. And I just rely now on the traffic to my site. So uh, the business has grown. It's been great. And uh, I, I'm still along for the ride and I'm having a blast. <laughs> so um, number two. How has your business grown over the years? Uh, it has grown exponentially, a global following. Um, I still answer about two to four hours of fan mail every day on a global scale. Uh, my website gets about two to three million hits a month to it. When I used to get in the beginning, maybe a thousand to two thousand hits a month. Now I'm about two to three million hits. My YouTube channel has surpassed the five million views mark. Um, and we, we, you know, we have uh, tens of thousands of people on our newsletter. So. Uh, it, it just every year just keeps getting better and better uh, and you know you get into a better groove you know I know my niche in and out and um, it's just been a lot of fun and it's it's grown grown a lot so if you ever want to start your own business on the internet you know definitely utilize it uh, you can start a business tomorrow if you wanted to with a phone and an internet connection there's no excuses anymore you know you just got to get creative and and have the drive and for me it was a passion in the beginning so uh, first was the passion then was the success so um, number three, how has, how has the business changed? Well, like everything else, everything gets better with age, you know? So in the beginning, when I, you know, when I would find some of these Volkswagens, you know, you don't know all the, f the features, all the nooks and crannies about the car. And, you know, uh, the first few Beetles were, were tough to put back together. You know, you just didn't know how certain things, you know, uh, attached to the car or were installed into the car. Um, so, you know, again, it's just one after the other. I made my mistakes, I took my risks, and then, you know, rolled that over to the next car. Now, with the new knowledge, I made it better the next time around. So, I mean, we've, I probably uh, jumped into over 100 to 150 Beetles and I, that I've gotten my hands into, uh, whether it was a full restoration or a partial restoration. So, just like anything else, you get better with age. I've been, again, doing this. I've been tinkering with Beetles since the summer of 99, which was my first bug. And, uh, you know, it just just uh, keeps going and get, keeps getting better. You know, we keep learning year after year. We find a new gem, and there's always some feature on a car that we've never seen before. It's just, you're always learning something about these cars. And uh, the more you learn, the more knowledge. Knowledge is power, and you, you can't beat that, right? So, um, number four, how many projects are you currently working on? 
uh, currently about 16 projects. Half of them I would say are builder bugs, the other half are finder bugs. Um, so, and then, you know, sometimes I squeak in maybe one of my own projects, but um, as of late, no, no projects for me. It's just basically uh, a full, you know, uh, projects for clientele. And uh, like I said, half are builds, half are finds. So um, that's where we're at there. Um, number five, are you still doing the Builder Bug program? Yes. Builder Bug has been a nice staple in our business. Um, basically, uh, Builder Bug is where I find you a bug and totally restore it from ground up. Uh, in the beginning, I was doing two different styles of restorations. I was doing a high end show driver quality restoration, and then uh, there was a museum esque. Uh, quality restorations. We've pretty much moved away from the driver uh, restorations and now only do the high end. Uh, to me, it's either all or nothing. Why cut corners? If you're going to do the restoration, do it once, do it right, and don't have to do it again. Uh, the driver restorations, you know, there were mostly body on restorations, of course, undercoated fenders, undercoating on the floor pans, things like that. And me as an artist, I like a I, you know, I just have attention to detail and I want it to go to the highest uh, level we possibly can. Um, so as of right now, build a bug is more or less just the, you know, high end museum esque showpiece quality bugs. So number six, tell us about the find a bug program. Find a bug is where I find you a bug basically that's already restored. Um, or sometimes it's a partial project, a project where maybe the car's already painted, but the the owner couldn't finish it, couldn't do the interior, finish the interior or do the motor or whatever or put it all back together. Uh, or sometimes we find a car where it's completely done and uh, we might do some subtle changes here and there or just do the full inspection on the car, make sure everything's turnkey, ready to go for you. Um, that's basically what find a bug is. It's basically everything uh, but paint. You know, the car's already painted. Uh, once you start jumping into paint, that's now uh, you're opening up uh, a whole other can of worms. That's where we have to strip the car down. So that's more of a restoration than a, uh, a partial. So uh, find a bug basically falls in line where people don't want to wait the two, to, two and a half to three year wait list that we have right now uh, for the build a bug, or they can't afford a build restoration um, and they want to go with a find a bug. Um, so. That's basically, I, I seek out the car. I got inspectors in different states to look at the cars for me. Uh, I know what questions to ask and, uh, you know, what pictures to request and, and, you know, how to really get on the seller. And uh, so you're getting a legitimate car. It's basically a peace of mind uh, program that you're getting a car that's going to be pretty much painless. So find a bug. <laughs> Um, number seven, what's your opinion on the vintage Volkswagen market? I think in general, the classic car market in general is still very good. It's still a good place to invest your money. Um, the German market, the Beatles, the buses, the Carmen Ghias, um, even the, the 356 Porsches and the 911 Porsches, I mean, they're just the German car market in general is, is doing really well. I'm noticing the Beatles uh, appreciating in value year after year, 10, 15%, sometimes 20%, depending on the year, make, and model. Of course, the 50s models Beatles are doing even better. 55 and earlier, old, early ovals and split window Beatles are doing uh, really well on the auction block. Um, and we've even seen it here firsthand. Uh, so uh, if there's any place you want to invest your money where you know it's going to appreciate in value, uh, definitely uh, you can't go wrong with a Beetle. I mean, 67 and early, of course, is my sweet spot, and I like to invest in those cars because that's the most collectible years. Um, you know, but if you want to go with a something 68 and later, that's fine too. They're going up in value as well, um, just not as much. They're not appreciating as much. So, but they'll get there. I mean, you, you, in the end, you're not going to really lose money unless you're really jobbing everything out or, you know, you're having a, a company maybe like us that's doing a build for you where the restoration cost might outweigh uh, what the car is actually worth. Uh, but in the end, you know, again, it's got to creep up to that point where it will surpass what you put into it because, again, they've, they've been appreciating very nicely. So um, to save yourself on restoration costs and you want to get more bang for your buck, definitely go with something 67 and earlier because that's where the appreciation has been really uh, climbing. So that was a mouthful. <laughs> um, number eight. What are your long-term business goals? What did I write on here? Um, definitely long-term business goals, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to move out of New York. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, but I'm tired of the cold. I don't know, the older you get, you know, you just don't want to uh, be in the cold. It's, it's in the middle of the winter right now. I want to drive my bugs. And, um, 
So maybe uh, maybe move south or something, Florida or the Carolinas or something like that. I mean, nothing's definite. Uh, it still looks like I'm going to be here for the, the short term, um, at least. So number nine, anyone you would like to thank or mention? Well, first and foremost, I definitely got to thank my pops for coming on this journey with me and uh, sticking it out with me to where we are right now. And uh, it's been a great ride. And um, you know, definitely my father, who's, who's just been very supportive of me. My family has also been very supportive. I've got four sisters, so they've all been uh, cheering me on as well. And uh, they come out and support our, you know, what we're doing here and come out to our shows and our gatherings as well. So um, also would like to thank um, my good friend, Lucky Larry. Larry uh, worked for VW back in the 60s and 70s, and his heart and soul was with the Beetle at the dealership. And uh, he walked into our shop one day, and who would have thought that he only lives about five minutes around the corner from my shop? And uh, he walked into our shop about four or five years ago, and uh, he's been a, you know, just a tremendous friend and uh, you know, a great part of the family, really. And then uh, the great historian and the living legend, Vince Vespi, uh, who I call the Dos Equis man, because I think he's the most interesting man in the world. The guy has been everywhere. He's done everything. He's got so much knowledge. He's a historian. And uh, he has a 1965 Carmen Ghia convertible that he bought new in 65. And to see this car coming around, you know, all the time to our shop and saying hello. And, you know, he's, he's another, you know, great friend and, you know, part of the family here. And uh, just, just been phenomenal. Um, and then uh, our good friend Herman, who now comes and, and, and builds, on our, builds our motors. He's an encyclopedia of knowledge. And he gives us so much insight on these on these cars. He knows so much about them, and he so much detail that it's uh, it's uncanny. And uh, I think I got to take a step back sometimes because I'm not only is he working for me, he's also a teacher. And uh, I've been learning very a, a lot from him, and it's been uh, very very good. So, and of course, my good friend Eric Shoemaker. You, Eric Shoemaker, I want to thank you because we've been helping each other out and supporting the cause and. Vintage rides on the road, and who would have thought? Who would have thought? I mean, I'm a kid in the candy store, and uh, it's you know just been meeting fabulous people through this business. It's only been attracting very positive people, and uh, you know I, I can't ask for you know a better life, really. You know I come in here every morning, and I'm like, wow, look what I, look what I have. I got a bunch of toys at my disposal, and I'm playing around, and I'm building bugs for people. I mean, how cool is that? So. Anyway, if you don't think that's cool, whatever. But <laughs> to me, I think it's a, a fun thing. So, all right, that's that video Q and A. Anybody have any questions they want to ever ask me? I'm more than happy to answer them, and maybe we'll do a video on it. Hey, you never know. So, uh, Chris at classicvwbugs.com is my email address, and my website is www.classicvwbugs.com. Keep bugging. Um.